Hello everyone, this is Medicine in 3 Minutes, and today we're talking about part 3 of circumventricular organs. More specifically, this video will cover OVLT, the Organum Vasculum Lamina Terminalis. The Organum Vasculum Lamina Terminalis is one of the 7 sensory circumventricular organs of the brain, and it provides information to other circumventricular organs like the median eminence, the subcortical organ, and the area posterior. So where is the OVLT exactly? If you look at the third ventricle, you can look at it as a box. It has an anterior side, a posterior side, a medial side, and a lateral side. If you look at the anterior side of the third ventricle, in front of it lies the optic chiasm or optic chiasma. And in between the optic chiasma and the anterior side, of the third ventricle is the lamina terminalis. In front of the lamina terminalis lies the OVLT. Now, embryologically speaking, the lamina terminalis is a point of the anterior neuropore, which should be closed on the 25th day. So when you have an embryo and it's developing on it through its stages, on day 25th, you have an opening called the anterior neuropore, on day 25th, 25, sorry, it should close. Once it closes, it starts to give rise to the lamina terminalis. If it does not close, then it leads to a condition called anencephaly, in which the brain does not develop. Now looking at the OVLT and its interaction with blood pressure. If your blood pressure drops, we call that hypotension. When you have hypotension, then the kidneys will sense that. And once the kidneys sense that there is a drop in blood pressure, they will activate a system called RAAS, which stands for renin angiotensin aldosterone system. And that system gets the blood pressure back up. Now, how does the system do so? It first gets the kidneys to produce a hormone called renin. Once renin has been produced by the kidneys, it leads or it triggers the secretion of angiotensin 2. Now keep in mind, the kidneys do not produce angiotensin 2. It's actually your lungs that produce it. But by the production of renin, then the production of angiotensin 2 gets triggered. That leads to the stimulation of OVLT receptors. The rise of osmolarity will send impulses to the supraoptic nucleus, which gives signal to release vasopressin, uh, known as the antidiuretic hormone. If you check part one of this video, it actually covers how the supraoptic nucleus um, interacts with the production of antidiuretic hormone. And moreover, neurons of the OVLT are involved in controlling thirst. When you have an inflammation or an infection anywhere in your body, some of the neurons will sense interleukin-1. If the levels of interleukin-1 are high, Thermoreceptors, uh, thermoreceptor neurons sorry, in the OVLT will induce a fever and it will interact with neurons of the hypo hypothalamus to trigger shivering. And that's the body's mechanism to cool you down pretty much. Um, also, we know that certain ependymal cells of the hypothalamus are slightly modified and called tenocytes, which control the appetite. Um, so we know that the OVLT controls thirst um, and also uh, appetite. Um, so with that, I will say bon appetit, and then I uh, hope you enjoyed this video, and that was Medicine in 3 Minutes, covering the OVLT organ of the circumventricular organs.